What's going on, everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona, and today we're going to talk about fortifying your home and being a prepper in Arizona. Why does this come about? Well, because we're dealing with some hard times. 2020 has been quite the year, right? Uh, you know, you see everything from people posting memes on social media saying, oh, hey, what's next? Alien invasion. What's next? Uh, you know, who knows, right? They, there's just all these jokes that are out there. So that's why this video comes about, because people really want to know, like, what does fortifying your house mean? What does it mean to prep? What should I be prepping for? So if you live out here in Arizona, like the rest of us, or you're thinking about living in Arizona, or you live out of state, some of this stuff may apply. To some of this stuff you may already know, but a lot of it may be new to you. So if you're excited about this video, crush up the likes and let's dive in here and talk about this. But before we do, I want to talk about some of the things that you could be possibly needing to prep for. By the way, there is links in the description to some of these items things just to look at when you're shopping around, get get the creative juices flowing, get the, the ideas going so you're prepared. But a book like this, Prepper's Long-Term Guide. Well, so we just had a pandemic right here. This was written before pandemic even happened, COVID uh, pandemics. Prepare for pandemics, okay? Prepare for potential famine. That's food shortages. We've already talked about that. A lot of people don't realize that a food shortage could include a lot of different things, not just the lack of meat or the lack of uh, toilet paper, but the lack of pharmaceuticals. If you guys take pharmaceuticals and you're dependent on that, what if that supply chain went away? That's kind of in line with what potential um, prepping for a famine would look like. Here's another one, economic collapse. Having your finances in order, some people do things like buy gold and silver. Uh, if that's right up your alley, consider that. Other people do cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Other people have money just sitting around cash in case they need it uh, but uh, you know economic collapse is something to consider freak occurrences you know freak occurrences you never you never know what it could be uh, just things that happen where you wake up and it's just hey wow that's happening right now right um, so you have freak occurrences like a volcano eruption uh, uh, maybe an earthquake that in an area that you didn't expect like they're talking about New Madrid earthquake the Yellowstone caldera um, electromagnetic pulse attack. So an EMP attack. These are these are discussed uh, because someone could, uh, an opposition force could fly a uh, satellite over our country, detonate it, and that can knock out all your power grid. Um, so you know, preparing for an EMP. Although a lot of this stuff statistically won't happen, uh, you may. It's better to have it not need it than need it not have it. This is the idea. Thanks to the 17 people who crushed up the likes. So um, and it, I know it's crazy to think about an EMP, but if you do some research, you'll realize it's not necessarily that crazy. War and or a terrorist attack. We've seen these happen. September 11th, we've seen stuff like this. You know, it's one of those days where you wake up one morning and you're like, holy, ma holy mackerel. That's what you're preparing for is that um, unexpected situation. Well, so when it comes to Arizona, some of the things you have to prepare for is water. Like, where are you going to get your water? How are you going to stay cool in the summer? How are you going to stay warm in the winter? Stuff like that. And so when it comes to protecting your house, some things that you'll want to consider. I also do have an another video about all of this stuff that I'm talking about in detail on my other channel, Urban J Reviews. If you go over there, you'll see a video about civil unrest preparation and other preparations. You can go through the videos over there. I just don't post them over here but there's a link in the description also. Anyway, so when it comes to fortifying your house, you're gonna to wanna to think about the five Ds. Deter, detect, defend, delay, and deny. So deter is basically make it to where it's not attractive to uh, try to enter your house. And some of the things you can do to uh, deter people from wanting to enter your house is putting motion lights up, not having some some people think that you want to fortify, you want to build taller walls. Well, sometimes having taller walls will um, shield the home intruder from being able to be seen by your neighbors in the event that, uh, you know, so shorter walls might not be a bad thing. But um, having signs up to say like, you know, your alarm system, for example, I have ADT, I'm in a three year contract with them. I got to use ADT for the next three years and pay them $30 a month. Okay, so detect. Detection could be like home detection is uh, security cameras, um, things like that. I've used Arlo, I've used Nest, I have a ring doorbell. I have a lot of cameras around my house, too many probably, right? Then defend, how are you defending yourself? Well, you know, some of you guys might have small arms, some of you guys might have baseball bats, some of you guys might have 
uh, bear spray or pepper spray, things like this, right? And then delay. So how would you delay a home intruder? Well, some things you can do is put a security door on all your doors. Well, what about your windows, right? Well, you can get hurricane uh, film or some sort of film that uh, makes it to where when they try to break your windows, it's there's a film there that makes it kind of, so it's delaying the entrance. And if you have weak points, you wanna be able to have the alarm, bam, push the alarm, bam, they can't get into the, the, the window, they can't get into the door, so you're fortified, okay? And then you have deny, right? And you're basically trying to uh, secure your easy access points. Okay, so then let's just say that the situation in your area is getting a little bit wild. So you're gonna to wanna to have three different areas to quote unquote bug out to. Thanks to 23 people who already crushed up the likes and the 40 people who are watching. I'm reading some of this. Francia says she has ADT. Okay, so uh, someone just mentioned having large breed dogs. So when it comes to bug in, bug out. So that bug in is fortifying your house that's staying at home, that's uh, quarantining from home, that's staying safe in your own house. But what if you need to leave your house because things around your home situation are crumbling? Well, you, you could have a secondary escape route, like a short-term escape place, a, a place that you've already kind of scouted out as a secondary that's out of the mix of the inner cities, out of the mix of the suburban areas or of the city, but close enough to where you can watch from a from a distance, but you're safe enough from, you're not in the line of fire, so to speak, right? So um, a secondary area to be in like a safe zone, maybe you camp there, uh, maybe it's a, a, a cabin, maybe it's a friend's cabin, maybe it's a hotel that you would stay at just to get out of the way of it all. And then you'd have like a long range, get out of the way, get way, way out of the way, like bunker down for a month or two kind of bug out uh, situation. And that would be like a cabin somewhere in the in the forest. Obviously, you're going to need a, a main artery to get there like a highway, but essentially you're going to want to get to sublets. You're going to want to be away from the highway, but you're not going to want to be too high up on the mountain. You're not going to want to be too low, but you're also going to want to have water sources around and maybe even be able to get food if you need it from uh, large animals or uh, maybe edibles in and around the area. We have places like that here in Arizona. You have that in like the Bradshaw Mountains, Mingus Mountain, stuff like that. So some of you guys can take take a look at some of those places where you could get a secondary, well, we're calling this a third uh, outlet, but it's a secondary home uh, for your bug out in case you need to get out of the big city and you need to be out of the line of fire of all the chaos, right? But you need to be able to be sustainable there. And some of the things you'll need to be sustainable at that particular location are going to be things like backup power supplies, backup food supplies, um, obviously defense. Um, you know, so these are all things you're going to have to think about food, water, uh, alliances. You're going to need to make sure you have alliances around you. You know, you want to know who's around you. You want to know if they're friend or foe kind of things. And these are all things that are really important. Now, when it comes to everything else, you know, you, you've, you've, you've got to really think about the current situation. Like we went from a pandemic, we went to civil unrest, we went to potential martial law. We've had two different curfews for two different reasons, which is kind of crazy. It's like, if this is a, if this is a video game, if this is Grand Theft Auto, it's like, okay, we know there's 15 levels to the game and we're on just level two. What's level three going to look like here in June or July, right? So it's like, you know, it's one thing after another. And it's like, we've never had two curfews enforced, but we just had them in the last like three months, right? One for a pandemic and one for civil unrest where Arizona went into two different curfews for two different reasons. So people who would say typically the doomsday preppers are crazy. They don't, they're just wasting money, this and that. They're kind of looking like they're not so crazy anymore, right? And that's the point we're making this, this video. So Jake says the Flagstaff area. Raphael says antibiotics. Linda says this is a great topic. Jake says I-17 will be a traffic jam. Yes, it will. So when you do pick your bug out destination, your destination far away from it all, maybe you will want to consider roads that have back backup access to get there that's not just necessarily a main artery. So like he said, I-17 will be completely backed up. I-10 likely backed up. So can you pick a place that you can access without having to get on the main artery that's one way out of town to Flagstaff, like I-17? So maybe you can pick a place out in the Bradshaws where you could take the dirt road or the Jeep trail to get out there if need be to get out to your safe zone. These are things you have to really think about ahead of time because 
you have to hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. That's what that's that's the motto, right? So, um, anyways, I just wanted to make this quick video and talk about this subject. Things to consider because obviously we are um, we've had two curfews that have come up. It's not that we want anything bad to happen. It's just we're kind of thinking ahead. We don't want to get caught um, unprepared, right? And that's the whole point of preparing, right? So. Anyways, guys, thanks to the 29 people who crushed up the likes, and we'll see you guys on the next video.